let's add some sound effects to our project. So to do that we need to get the sound and then we're going to create an audio listener and load the audio file into 3JS and then we'll tell the program when to play the sound and when to stop the sound. So let's get our sound file. So if you go on YouTube and look at Landspeeder sound effects you can find a bunch of different pages. One way to get your sound file is to record it using Audacity. So to do that you would just hit the record button and then play the YouTube video and it would record the sound in this file. Since the sound is going to loop we should get rid of the ends and you can just highlight the ends that don't have a sound and press delete and go to the beginning and highlight the part that has no sound and press delete. And now we have our sound file so we can export it as an mp3. So file, export, export as mp3 and I'm going to call it land speeder sound. There we go. Now we have our sound effect. So let's load it into our code editor. Here I've created a folder called sounds and you can just drag and drop that mp3 file into the sounds folder. Okay, let's declare a global variable for that sound. So in my declare variable section I'm calling it sound speeder and that will be the sound file. Okay, in our list of functions let's create a function called init sound. Okay, let's scroll down and create our init sound function. So here's my init sound function. So I'm just creating a new three audio listener that's going to listen to the sound and we're going to add that to the camera and then I'm creating a new three audio that's going to be the audio source and I'm just passing in that audio listener Now I'm putting that in the sound speeder object okay now I'm creating a new three audio loader and we're going to use that to load the sound file so this is the path of that audio file in my code editor directory and then I'm going to pass that into this function and I'm going to put it in the buffer of that sound speeder object here and then I'm setting the looping to true because I want that sound to loop over and over and over again once it's done. And I'm setting the volume of this particular sound to 0.5. You can set it to whatever you want. Okay, now we just need to control when the sound starts and when we want the sound to stop. So let's scroll down to our key controls. So here's our arrow key controls and just below that is our move speeder function. Now I'm going to reorganize this a bit because some of the stuff in the move speeder function just isn't needed in the move speeder function because the move speeder function is called in the animate loop and some of the stuff doesn't need to be checked every time the animate loop is called it only needs to be checked if the arrow keys are pressed so for example if speed is bigger than max speed the only time speed increases is when you're pressing the up arrow key so I'm gonna move this to below the arrow up key. Now we're going to tell the sound to start playing here because I want the sound to start when the land speeder starts moving. If it stops moving I don't want it to play. So here I'm saying when the up arrow key is pressed if the sound speeder is not playing. So if the sound is not playing then we should start playing it. And then for the down arrow I want to check if the speed is zero and if the speed is zero then we're going to stop playing the sound. So let's go down to the move speeder function and here we're already checking that. So I'm going to take this line and cut it out. When the down arrow key is pressed, if the speed is less than zero, the speed will be zero. And if the speeder sound is playing, then we're going to stop playing that sound file. So now the arrow keys will control when the sound plays and when the sound stops. Now the move speeder function just looks after moving the speeder. So if we test it, there we go. So the sound starts and the sound stops. Awesome. So now let's do our shadow map. Okay, so to get the shadow map going we have to enable the shadow map and set the type of shadow map in the renderer. Then we have to get the ground and the ramp to receive shadows and then allow the speeder to cast shadows and then get the directional light to cast shadows and play with the shadow map size and the shadow camera for us to so let's go in the init scene function first and play with the render. So in the render I'm enabling the shadow map and I'm selecting a particular type of shadow map. PCF soft shadow map. That is not the default shadow map type. The default type is PCF shadow map. So I wanted kind of a softer shadow map. And if you look at the documentation there's four types of shadow maps that you can experiment with. Okay so let's go down to the ground material. So in my create ground function down at the bottom here, I am going to set the receive shadow property to true for the ground mesh. Now let's go to the ramp. So in my create ramp function, I'm doing the same thing. I'm setting the receive shadow property to true for the ramp mesh. 
Now let's go up to the create player function and allow the speeder to cast shadows. So here's the create player function. Scroll down, here we go. So since the speeder is an imported model, um, it might be a collection of parts and they're grouped together to form a speeder mesh. So we have to go through each of the parts of that speeder mesh and set the cast shadow property to true. So we're going to do the traverse method. We're going to go through each of the speeder mesh parts and I'm calling it a node. And if that node is a mesh, then we're going to set the cast shadow property of that node to true. Now let's go up to the directional light. So here's my init lights function. So here I'm setting the cast shadow property to true. And now I'm going to create my shadow map size. So the higher the number, the better the quality of the shadow map, but it requires more resources from your device. So this was a number I was happy with, 2048, and that number will vary by your machine. Just make sure it's a number divisible by two. And now I'm creating my shadow camera frust drum. And 600 worked for me, so that means the edges of the frust drum are 600 units away from the middle. And the shadows start casting 0.5 units away from the camera and will appear until 600 units away from the camera. So you'll have to play with this number. Now when we play it, and you can see that the shadow adjusts its position depending on where the speeder is with the light source. Right on, awesome. There's our shadow map. So now let's press the reset button, which will reset the speeder to the start in case you fall off the edge or something happens. To get our reset button working, we're gonna have to get an icon we're going to have to bring it into HTML. We're going to have to style it using CSS. We're going to have to link it to HTML so we can interact with it. So I can call a reset function that will reset the speeder to its original location and rotation. So let's get our icon first. There's lots of free sites to get icons. Flaticon.com. And you can just search for whatever type of icon you want. I just searched under reset and it gives you a whole bunch of selections and you can choose whatever you want. So just download it and save it to your device. And to bring it into the code editor, I made a folder called icons and I just dragged and dropped the icon into here. Now before the body section where our script tag is with our JavaScript, I'm making an image tag with an ID of reset. And the source will be the path where that icon is located in your code editor directory. And alt equals reset. That means if the icon can't load for any reason, this will be shown on the screen instead of the image. Now let's style this image with an ID of reset in the CSS. So in the style.css page, now I'm styling two versions of it. The first is when the mouse is not over it, and the second is when the mouse is hovering over it. So I'm positioning it absolutely at the bottom right hand corner of the screen and when the mouse is over it, it changes its opacity to 1 so it's fully visible. After that we need to link it to HTML so we can interact with it. So I'm going to scroll down below the declare variables section and here I'm declaring my restart button. So it will be stored in the object reset and I'm getting the element by ID reset. So I'm just attaching that image to this reset object in JavaScript. And then I'm going to add an event listener to this reset object. So when this object is clicked, so when the icon is clicked, we're going to run this function, reset speeder. So let's make this reset speeder function. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and put it there. So here's the reset speeder function. So I'm just returning everything to the original state. So I'm setting the angle to zero. I'm setting the speed to zero. I'm stopping the sound of the speeder if it's playing. I'm setting the velocity of the speeder body to zero on all axes. I'm setting the angular velocity of the speeder body to zero on all axes. I'm setting the quaternion of the speeder body to its original. And I'm just copying that quaternion to the speeder mesh quaternion. And then I'm setting the position of that speeder body to its starting position. And I'm copying that to the speeder mesh position. And that's it. So let's try it out. Here we go. So you see the icon on the bottom right of the screen and it hovers on and off. Good. Okay, it's flipping and when I hit the reset, it gets rid of any velocity and puts it in the starting position. Perfect. So now let's add a heads up display that shows the speed of the land speeder. 
To use our speedometer, we're going to use the library progressbar.js. The link for this website is in the description below. To get it, we'll click on the GitHub page and look in the dist folder and progressbar.js. There we go. And then click on raw and then right click and save as and save. And we can just drag and drop this progressbar.js file into our code editor directory. Mine's in my modules folder. Then we're going to add a script tag in the head section of the HTML file and the source will be the path of the progress bar JS in our code editor. Okay, to display it, I created two div elements, one with an ID of HUD for heads up display and one with an ID of speedometer and I typed in speed to show on the screen. The reason I put a div inside another div element is in case you wanted to add to it later and add more displays, you could just add more displays inside this HUD div element. Now let's style it with CSS. So for the heads up display element, I just positioned it absolutely at the top right hand corner of the screen. And for the speedometer, I positioned it relative to this heads up display element like so. But you can do it any way you want. Okay, so let's write some JavaScript to get it going here. So we don't have to add any global variables and all the code can be found on the website to start with. And then you can just change it to your liking. So you can pick what type of progress bar that you want or what type of speedometer you want, whether you want a line or a circle, a circle with text or without text or a semicircle or a custom shape. And at the bottom of each of these examples, there's a little pencil. If you click that, it will show you the code and a working example in JS Fiddle. So you can just copy and paste this code into uh, your code editor, which is what I did here. So here is the ID of speedometer, just like I put up here. So you can change the stroke width, the color, the type of easing, the duration, the starting color, the ending color. So mine starts at the color green and ends at the color red. And you can change these font settings. But what this doesn't tell us is what variable is it animating. We want to animate the speed variable. So we need to create a function to do that. So let's scroll down to the bottom to create an update HUD function. Okay, so just below my reset speeder function, I'm creating the function update HUD. And it's one line. In that bar, I'm animating the speed variable. So every time the speed changes, I need to call this update HUD function. Okay. So when are we going to change this speed? We're going to change it when we reset the speeder, right? So I'm calling the update HUD function inside this reset speeder function after I reset the speed. And the speed changes when we press the up arrow key and down arrow key. So let's go to our key controls. So for the arrow up key, I am updating the HUD after I press it. And for the down arrow key, I am updating the HUD after I press it. And I added an equal sign here. So if speed is less than or equal to zero, then speed is zero. And that's it. So let's test it out. Right on. So there's our land speeder project.